Uh, let's talk a little bit about FX. There's some talk in the TNA locker room that you had been meeting with FX officials. And as the story goes, FX officials told Jarrett that they were interested, but wanted to see how impact performed in the ratings over a three month period. Does that sound right? What can you tell us about FX? So from the day that we, I'll say made the decision that, Hey, the asylum um, we're, we're up and running and the churn rate, the burn rate on cash and the revenues, uh, it was all, uh, I can't say stable, but it was understood, but the Carters and myself, how do we grow this? Well, let's figure out, um, we have a product now we are another year or two years or two and a half, three years away from the attitude era. Uh, WWE keeps turning along a publicly traded company. They've got three years of, I'll call it a PG product or beginning of a PG product under their belt. And so talking about TV and we were dealing, we never signed exclusively with an agent. Uh, the product just wasn't there yet, but we had multiple conversations and I made, uh, with Dixie and without Dixie, um, several trips to LA just to have different conversations and FX was one of them. And it, it goes back to, well, can you bring us ratings? You know, just the, the exact same rinse and repeat conversation that I had so many times prior to spike, what can you deliver? Let me see who you have on your roster, all those kind of conversations. And that's why we, you know, made the decision, Hey, let's, let's go get on Fox sports. It's going to be expensive, but at least now we're not producing just pay-per-view content. We're going to produce a TV show as well. Let's talk a little bit about the pivot from weekly pay-per-views. You mentioned, you know, we, we've got the, the afternoon spot now with Fox sports net FSN is where we're going to have that show. And there's lots of speculation before it actually is made official. Uh, but ultimately a decision comes down that the weekly pay-per-views are going to cease on September 8th, 2004. So prior to moving to uh, do the Fox sports net uh, stuff in Orlando, there's about 6,000 buys week in week out for TNA. And there's speculation in the observer that that means that the company is probably losing around a hundred thousand dollars a week, which doesn't seem like that's possible. Uh, but there's also a report from the torch that maybe part of the idea of switching to a traditional monthly Sunday pay-per-view is because maybe they've lost some confidence uh, over at direct TV in this weekly initiative. It doesn't feel like they're promoting it as much or pushing it as much, but perhaps if we move to a more traditional uh, Sunday once a month format that they're familiar with from WWE and we offer it a little cheaper instead of being $34.95, it's $29.95 or maybe even $24.95. If it's a little more affordable and once a month, uh, maybe DirecTV would get on board. That's what's all speculated in the newsletters. But Jeff, you lived it. What really led to the end of weekly TNA pay-per-views? What I want to make sure because you you I want to make sure I always circle back. What what led to it? Well, what we know now we didn't know then, and so diving into producing TV starting in June of '04, so June, July, and August, we said let's start producing content and looking at the burn rate. And I think it was closer to ten, but we'll you know observers reporting six and. Man, oh man, if you could have seen Dallas accounting, because the buys that would come in, and I don't want to do a tangent, but you know, the buys report come in monthly, but some months you have five Wednesdays, some months you have four Wednesdays. And so a buy would come in to try to keep track of all that it was a nightmare. But with all that being said, the pay per view companies, they, they, you know, they adapted to us. We, we've never done a weekly pay-per-view episodic. Uh, and so their comfort feeling obviously was monthly pay-per-views. They could schedule it better. They knew weekends were a better uh, revenue stream, all of the above. They always wanted us to go on weekends. Well, they couldn't give us every Saturday or Sunday night because of 
WWE or UFC, whatever it may be. But when we kind of, not kind of, when we sat down and, and looked at, okay, if we're going to Orlando to start producing content, um, it's going to make sense sooner rather than later that even if we did the Wednesday pay-per-views all to do it under one, ro- w- one roof. Well, when you just start doing the simple math and say, okay, we're probably a lot better off to do four TVs and a pay-per-view and let go of the Nashville rent, let go of the lights, let go, you know, basically shut down Nashville. Conrad, it wasn't a hard decision to make financially knowing that, okay, this is the progression of the product. One of the things that surprised, I remember my dad, me, Bob Ryder, a few other folks is that people had got in a groove and people had changed like, oh no, you're not going to give up Wednesdays in Nashville. And we're thinking the hell we ain't Yeah, Yes, we absolutely are going to give them up um, as things progress. What we were just not sure of is what can really, what can we really do once a month on Sunday? And the thing that kind of put a monkey wrench in there that we had to take a leap of faith was direct TV and, and dish. They could not promise us a Sunday um, period. And we got it because they said WWE is president and most of your major boxing uh, stuff is on Saturday. Uh, so we certainly can't give you a Saturday and we can't really give you a Sunday until we know the date the WWE is going to hold. So we, they were moving targets and we kind of knew that and we were like, okay, what's the worst that could happen and played all the scenarios out. So from a financial perspective, making the move and keeping the episodic nature, that's how professional wrestling, uh, I think is the magic of it. Uh, when you look even to this day of, of all forms of wrestling, the episodic nature is what sets us apart. Um, but that being said, Financially, Conrad, no brainer. How we were going to execute it, when we were going to execute it, the transition of it all, we just kind of had to put a plan in place, and which wasn't really, really difficult, but it was changed for everybody, including, uh, you know, Panda. And Panda wanted to wrap their head around it because we had to always put in the back of our mind, okay, hypothetically, what happens if Fox Sports pulls the plug? And they're like, hey, we can't, we'd love to take your money, but we that can't work out. Okay, well, direct TV, dish, in demand. You know what? We're going to have to have you guys go on a Friday uh, this month because the Sunday's held and it, whatever. It, it's just kind of the hypotheticals of, you know, what what is best and worst case scenario. But once we kind of extrapolated all of it out, played it out, made the decision, um, it became apparent this is the direction we're going. And if something happens that unforeseen circumstances, we'll pivot again. Uh, because we knew the simple math, Conrad, four TV shows and, and a once a month pay-per-view if we, you know, because you don't know how many repeat buyers you have and the revenue coming in, it just made sense. This is the direction we're going. Because again, it became much more, I'll call it, um, since the mid nineties, the traditional format that our monthly pay-per-views and that's where we headed.